Let's take a look at some EOS charts for Brave New Coin. As usual, everything on this video and article is educational information and should not be misconstrued as trading advice. So if we look at the naked chart here for EOS over the past year, since June essentially, we can see we've had just a series of lower lows with muted bullish rallies that were essentially quickly sold off. This is classically a bearish trend. We'll see that with some indicators, both subjective and math-based or otherwise. And there's nothing here looking at the naked chart that really strikes me as like a massive pattern or a massive reversal. We did have an attempt at a bearish head and shoulders at the bottom of the trend that is attempting to fail, which is good if you're bullish. Um, there isn't, for instance, a massive Adam and Eve as there was in the end of last year in the beginning of uh, January 2018. If we pop on some stuff, take a holistic view. I like looking at the 200 EMA and the 50 EMA, which essentially is uh, a year's worth of price data and a quarter year's worth of price data on average. Now, if we're above those means, then we could say we're bullish. If we're below, we're bearish. It's a litmus test for the trend. It's black and white. And as you can see, we've been below the 200 since June, July. And we haven't really tested the 200. We've failed to mean revert completely. Uh, there's also been a bearish death cross since June, July. So again, all of this is classically bearish. There's no ramp in volume as there was at the end of 2018, beginning of 19. There's no capitulation. There's no immediate signs of volume reversal. And there's no immediate signs in the RSI, Relative Strength Index, which is an oscillator for a bullish reversion. We're not seeing an extreme in RSI as we did in 2018, or an extreme uh, to the high end uh, as we did in April. I also like to look at the Bitfinex long short ratio, which is this top panel here, green being longs, red being shorts. Historically for most altcoins, this hasn't been super relevant. Mainly it's most relevant when you see extremes in the data. So when you see longs at all time high, you get a little worrisome if you're bullish because as price comes down, longs will quickly tumble and push price further. This is known as a long squeeze as shorts are at all-time highs. Um, again, you get nervous if you're short. It's a crowded trade. Shorts quickly come off, and then you have a short squeeze. Uh, since, again, June, July, we had a massive reduction in shorts. This is most likely related to the exchange itself and not necessarily any relevant comparison for price data. Um, but since then, we certainly haven't had short interest perk up like we did before that period. Uh, longs are continuing to just cruise at all-time highs-ish, you know, in that range. We're not seeing a massive long squeeze or anything like that. And you really don't see that unless there's a quick reversal in price because price can bleed and bleed and bleed especially on Bitfinex where leverage is sort of maxed out at 5x. Uh, your margin call at 5x leverage is quite low if you're in a long trade, so this can just keep bleeding before people get extra nervous or get margin called. Uh, another thing I like to, like to look at is the volume profile of the visible range, VP, VR, which are these horizontal bars you'll see on the chart here. And all this is showing is the volume interest at that price versus... Uh, the volume bars at the bottom, which are volume based on that time frame or that period. So generally, when you see spikes in VPVR, you can treat those as support or resistance levels. Typically, they match uh, chart patterns, horizontals, uh, just basic psychological levels, $1, $2, $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $2 $
which are all either extreme lows or extreme highs, or they represent a wick, for instance. They don't necessarily have to be the highest high in the period or the lowest low, for instance, but they are typically extreme high or extreme, extreme low. And then what it does for you is it paints this median line, which is yellow. And, you know, if we're below the median line, we're leaning more bearish. If we're above the median line, we're leaning more bullish, regardless of the pitchfork. So this is a bearish pitchfork. It points downward instead of upward. Um, the two extremes here show basically when to buy, when to sell. So if we've reached the bottom extreme, that says we're basically oversold and there's a decent buy opportunity. And if we are at the top of the uh, pitchfork, historically, that suggests a sell signal. So until we break out of this pitchfork, price should continue bouncing around, bouncing around. So the most important zones are the median line, which is the mean of the trend. And as you can see, we were held down, held down. And finally, we went to the opposite edge, the extreme support of the pitchfork. And then we would typically return and then test the other edge, test the media line. So we kind of bounce around until price bounces out of the pitchfork completely. Looking at the Ichimoku cloud, which aims to get you in 80% of a trend. The most important thing regarding the cloud is whether or not price is above or below the cloud. If we're below the cloud, we're bearish. If we're above the cloud, we're bullish. The moment we perk above the cloud, we go long. The moment we perk below, we go short. Historically, for all of crypto, the cloud has a pretty good hit rate for high time frame, long and short positions. So if we look at since July, again, we've been below the cloud, classically bearish this entire time. As the cloud tends to flatten out, tends to thin out, then we can see potential signs for reversal. Or as we did here, we typically have a chart pattern to match the reversal likelihood. So if I'm bullish, what I want to see going forward is a bullish cloud tend to start to form with a bullish TK cross. We're definitely far from that now. So this is, again, no surprise, very bearish attempts at uh, bottoming out here. And then lastly, if we look at the EOS BTC pair with all those same metrics, we can see we've been in a multi-month sideways range, which is typically a good sign at a trend reversal attempt in the making. We can see we're far below the 200. Both the 50 and the 200 are flattening out. It's a very high volume interest in this current zone, 35,000 sats. The cloud is flattened out almost completely. So if we start to see price action above the cloud, testing the 200, then we can get more bullish. As we're sitting now, this is almost completely neutral as neutral can get with a bearish leaning because it's below the cloud, below the 200. Now, if we break this zone, if we make lower lows, the VPVR would suggest a price target of around 24,000 sats. Upside targets sit at around 55,000 sats to 65,000 sats, depending on both the VPVR nodes and the flat Kumo from July to November.